Okay, there'll be a number of times we'll have to find the absolute value of a sequence. So if we have a sequence a sub n, we need to find the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n. If that is equal to zero, the absolute value of the sequence limit is zero, then we know that the limit of the sequence a sub n is also equal to zero. That's called the absolute value theorem. Now there's some patterns that we need to start recognizing for sequences. So we're going to use examples for this. So we're going to find a sequence a sub n which has um, these first five terms and we're going to determine whether the particular sequence has converges or diverges. So we're going to start working for patterns. So we're going to look for a pattern from the numerator. So I notice that if I, if I take two and I raise it to a power I get the numerator term. So and the pattern for the denominator, which is our numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, I notice those are odd numbers. And so if my first term where n is 1, if I take 2 times 1 and I subtract 1, that'll give us um, 1. If I take 2 times 2 and minus 1, that gives us 3. 2 times 3 minus 1 gives us 5. 2 times 4 minus 1 gives us 7. And so we notice our pattern here is 2n minus 1. So putting that together, we would say our a sub n, our nth term for this sequence, is 2 to the n, that's the numerator, divided by 2n minus 1. Okay, now to figure out this has a limit, well, we need to uh, figure out this converges. Let's evaluate the limit of this um, series. So the limit as n goes infinity of 2 to the n over 2n minus 1. Now, this gives us our infinity over infinity in determinate form. So let's try L'Hopital's rule. To evaluate this limit. So the derivative of 2 to the n is the natural log of 2 times 2 to the n. And the derivative of 2n minus 1 is simply 2. And we have a common denominator but the numerator keeps getting larger and larger so this goes to infinity. So since the limit of the series goes to infinity the series diverges. Now let's learn what a monotonic series is. Um, a monotonic series is if the terms are non-decreasing, so staying the same or increasing. So for example, a sub 1 is less than or equal to a sub 2, which is less than or equal to our a sub 3 term, which is less than or equal to our a sub n term, which is less than or equal to all proceed, uh, following terms. So an example of a monotonic sequence, so a non-decreasing sequence could be something like the series Okay, next example of a monotonic series that's non-decreasing. We can also have a monotonic series that's non-increasing. That means it stays the same or decreases from each term. So a sub 1 is less than or equal to a sub 2, which is, I mean, greater than or equal to a sub 3, which is greater than or equal to our a sub n term, which is greater than or equal to all following terms. So let's get an example of a monotonic non-decreasing sequence. And um, that would be something like, let's say, 1... 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 6. So notice that the terms either stay the same or increase in value. Okay, a monotonic that's non-increasing, the terms either will stay the same or decrease in value. So example of this would be maybe 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, because all the terms decrease. It doesn't have to stay the same pattern of decreasing, but that's kind of what goes what you're looking for. Remember whether this series sequence is given nth term is monotonic. So there's a couple ways to do this. The first way, I'm going to work A, one method, and B, another method. So first method is just to find the first few terms of the sequence, see if you notice a pattern. So when I replace n with 1, I get 2. When I place n with 2, I get 4. When I replace n with 3, so so far it's increasing. I get 2, so therefore it decreases. So we, we got increase and decreasing, so we know this is non-monotonic. Another way is algebraically to compare your nth term your, um, with your n plus 1 term. Okay, this is usually a little faster way in most cases. So I'm going to compare my b sub n, which is 2n over 1 plus n, to my 2 times n plus 1, over 1 plus n plus 1. So I'm replacing every n with n plus 1. Now I'm going to just kind of simplify this down a little bit. So on the right hand side that simplifies down to 2n plus 2 over n plus 1. Now to compare these fractions, in order to compare fractions you need a common denominator. So I'm going to find a common denominator. So multiplying the left hand side by n plus 2 over n plus 2. 
and multiplying the right hand side by 1 plus n over 1 plus n. Now that you have a common denominator, the, you do, all you have to do is compare the numerator. So if the top is larger uh, on the left, then it's in, um, increasing. If the, the top is larger on the right, it's decreasing. So let's just look at our numerator, which is 2n squared plus 4n, and compare that to 2n squared plus 4n plus 2. So you can barely see that these are the same, except the right hand one is adding two, so it's two larger than the other. So if I come subtract those like terms, we see that we got zero is greater is less than two. So our comparison is that our nth term will always be less than our nth plus one term. So that means this is monotonic sequence. Okay, also you'll need to know some terminology for this sequence um, for sequences called bounded sequences. So a bounded sequence is where you have an upper limit or a lower limit thinking of the sequence values. So a sequence a of n is bounded above if there is a real number m such that a sub n is always less than or equal to our m term for all n. So the number m is called the upper bound of the sequence. So a sequence will reach could reach m or get infinitely close to m but never reach it. So that's kind of what it would look like if I'm plotting the, the, the terms in this sequence. We're approaching that m and we can reach it or we can, we can get infinitely close to it. A sequence is bounded below a real number n such that n is less than or equal to a sub n for all n. The number n is called the lower bound. So in this case, we have a lower value that the, the values in the sequence are approaching but never quite reach. So that would be a lower bound. And it could look like this or it could look at the other end. It could be growing the other direction approaching it. Okay, a sequence a sub n is, called, is bounded if it is bounded above and bounded by low. So if we have an upper bound and a lower bound, we will call the sequence bounded. So we want to determine the sequence is bounded above, bounded below, bounded or unbounded. Okay, so kind of look at the pattern that's going on. So remember, n can be any number starting at 1, increasing by integers. So our ace of 1, so we got the, for this first one, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So ace of n is bounded below because we will never get to anything. Ace of n will always be greater than 1 or greater than 0. It doesn't matter which one you do there. It doesn't have to be infinitely close to it. So we always know that it's bounded below, but it's not bounded above because we can keep going to infinity. So this is a bounded below se um, sequence. Now looking at b sub n. So again, I want to do the first few terms in this um, sequence to see what's going on. So the first term would be 1 half. Second term would be 2 thirds. Third term would be 3 fourths. So notice the pattern is the numerator is always one less than the denominator. And we're getting closer and closer to. So we would say this is bounded below and bounded above. Bounded below because our values for our numbers for b sub n is always going to be between 0 and 1. We're never going to quite reach 1. And we're never going to quite reach zero. So this would be a bounded sequence. Okay, last thing we need to know is a monotonic convergence theorem. That is, if a sequence a, a sub n is bounded and monotonic, then it automatically converges. That's neat. It will have a convergence. So if you have a bounded monotonic sequence, it converges.